we're, most of us aren't born for anything, but we are all born with the potential for greatness and whatever it, whatever it is that you want to achieve. I'd love to show you today three reasons why your exercise regime is exactly the same process as building your successful business. So my twin sister and I decided to take up running again just a few weeks ago as part of our motivation to do our 28 day no alcohol challenge, which incidentally is absolutely life changing. And if you're sat on the fence about doing it, absolutely do it. It will change everything for you. So we decided to get back into running and by no means am I talking about marathon running, we just decided to do the park run route 5k and we run twice a week. Now we're on about week four or so now and the three things keep coming up over and over again because part of my running journey, part of my training journey is learning how to control the head talk. When your lungs are burning or your legs feel heavy or you feel like you don't want to go on, what gets you through is the conversation that you're having in your head. And I'm really quite good at that, but I've been finding it really, really challenging. With everything that's going on in the world right now, I am struggling with more anxiety than I have ever had in my life. And when I feel that level of anxiety, it makes it really difficult to breathe. So when you're out running, you can understand that it's quite a challenge for me to do that. So 5K was enough to get us going. But there was these three things that kept going round and round in my head all the time and made me realize that it is exactly the same as the mindset that you need to run your business. So I wanna share these three things with you in the hope that it's gonna give you some clues about where you might need to start shifting your mindset. So the first thing I found myself saying was, I'm just not a born runner. I'm not born for running. I'm not really born for any kind of sport because I was finding it so incredibly hard just to get this 5K done. And it's easy to turn around and say, well, some people are just born to do things. But even if you think about the child prodigies that we see who are insanely talented at playing, uh, you know, playing instruments or they're really, really good at sport. If you look at the regime for their practice, they practice a lot. Right, so they may have discovered early on that they had this natural affinity for it. But to get to the level that they're at, they've done a huge amount of practice. So the learning that I got from that was, or it was more of a reminder, but you might not have heard of it like this before. We're, most of us aren't born for anything, but we are all born with the potential for greatness in whatever it, whatever it is that you want to achieve. Everything that you want to achieve comes down to taking tiny steps every day, over and over again, until you become consciously competent, until you become the expert, no matter what it is. And there are always gonna be fundamental steps to support that. So it's never just about the going for the run, as an example, it's about how much sleep am I getting, how hydrated am I, what's my nutrition like, am I getting massages? All of those things will support the goal outcome. If you listen to some of the other podcasts recently, you know I talked specifically about focusing on the system, which is you, and get your eyes off the goal, because it will change everything for you. Now, the easiest way to relay this message really is that if you take an acorn, and I'm sure you've all heard this before, if you take an acorn and you go plant that acorn in you know, dry, dusty soil and you don't water it and it doesn't get a lot of sunshine and da da da, that's never gonna grow into the oak tree. But when you put the acorn into the environment and you nurture it, you allow it to thrive. And from that tiny little acorn grows this, huge huge tree now human beings on the other hand are a little bit different the way that we activate our greatest potential is by nurturing the inner environment yes it's true that you know you can propel yourself much quicker when you contain your circle when you choose your circle but even with a great circle if you don't nurture your inner environment you're never going to thrive so that was the first lesson, is that you might feel like you're not born to do this, and maybe you weren't born to do this, because most people aren't, but you absolutely have everything you need to activate your highest level of potential, but you have to nurture that inner environment. Number two is that um, as the runs went on, I was getting really disheartened, because I was like, why is this not getting any easier? I used to be able to do the 5K park run without stopping, never really that fast, but it didn't feel as hard as what it was feeling like now. And I was doing it in intervals. I, I couldn't get my head around the fact why it just felt so difficult. And my sister was saying to me, well, maybe it's because you've got the anxiety and da 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 da. And I thought, okay, so I'm not drinking, I'm getting plenty of sleep. Maybe I'm a little bit dehydrated, but it's just, it doesn't seem to be getting easier. Now, 
it wasn't until we checked our time at the end that the reason that I felt like I was breathing out of my bottom was because we were knocking every single time we were knocking down our time, whether it was, you know, 10 seconds off of, off of each 1K lap or we were sprinting faster on some than on the others. The point of the matter was the reason that it wasn't getting any easier was because we was unknowingly pushing harder. And we just, we, we just made ourselves believe it's because we weren't doing good enough and it, was, and it was just staying challenging for us. So the learning around that, which is so important in your business, is if you are not measuring, you are not ma managing. So if you're not measuring something, you can't manage something. You can't go back down the strategy and say, this is where I'm losing momentum. This is the thing that's not working for me. And if you're not doing that, you don't know how to assess and review and amend what to do to create a different outcome. The other thing about this, which is probably even more dangerous over the long term, is if you're not measuring something uh, you know, with a tangible uh, measurement, you know, like a, a time or, you know, a weight or an income or whatever it is you're using. If you're not measuring something tangible, your measurements are based on your emotions. And for the most part, emotions are going to lead you a merry dance and it's not going to be something that you want to use as a long-term metric. Because what does it even mean? Like, what if you're having a bad day and everything you do seems useless and inconsequential? What if you have a particularly great day because you've had a complete day off and you've achieved nothing, but you keep doing that? Does that make sense? So you cannot use the way you feel as a yardstick for the progress that you're making. You have to have something to measure. And if, like me, the thought of measuring metrics wants you, makes you want to run in the other direction, pay somebody to do it for you. Make sure you know what, metric, what metrics you're measuring and why you're measuring them. Because here's the thing, income isn't a measure of anything. If you're making a load of money but you're miserable, what, what does money matter? You know, if you're making a load of money and it's not in the business that you want, or you're making a load of money and you're spending it all out on cost, what's the point? So please do not get stuck in just the income here. So measure something tangible. And the third thing is that, like I touched on before, with all this global energy that's going on, anxiety is something that I'm managing on a daily basis, which is completely unheard of for me. I, I've just never suffered, not for at least... 15 years I've not suffered with anxiety. And, and as I said, it's impacting the way that I breathe. So I was really, really struggling with the longer intervals. Only intervals of three minutes, but I was getting to the end of that three minutes and I was now starting to panic because I could feel my heartbeat was becoming irregular. And I, now, I'm, now I'm starting to get in panic mode and I couldn't tell whether it was anxiety or whether it's just because I'd pushed my body. So the two sort of merged. So I felt like I was in a constant state of anxiety. Now, I felt like an absolute failure when I said to my sister, look, you know, if I'm going to keep doing this until I've got all this other stuff under control, I'm going to need to drop the interval times down. And we dropped it down to two and a half minutes. So we were doing three minutes on, 30 seconds off. We dropped it down to two and a half minutes and we took 20 seconds off. Guess what happened? Our 5K run time came down by a minute. So we were running for, sorry about that, we were running for less time. We had a 10 second reduced uh, rest rate, but we were running faster. Now, the learning around that is, there's a couple of learnings here, is that you have to set the pace that suits you. Everybody has different energy levels. Everybody has different things that drain their emotional uh, and physical and cognitive batteries. We talked about that in another episode. So there is no right or wrong. You have to do the homework to find out what works for you. Now, when you do these shorter sprints, and remember the last episode we did earlier on this week, I took you through a process called the 21-day sprint to help you get some focus and momentum. You can go download the worksheet and get a bit more information on that at yourrichlife.co.uk. You can find that in the free resources section. But when you've got that smaller time, there is something mentally that says, look, I can go harder right now because this is just a tiny, this is a tiny moment in time and I can push that little bit extra. It's, it's manageable, it's tangible. You can almost see the finish line each time. Then you get that 20 second break and you can take the breather and then you can go again. And interestingly, when, the first time we did that, there were a couple of the sprints where the 20 seconds just wasn't long enough. 
So we took an extra 10 seconds. And again, when we checked our time, we'd not knock the door of a minute off of the kilometre. So we were really going much faster. But it doesn't seem like that at the time because our focus was on, oh, my God, this is so hard. So you have to understand that you're the only one that can determine your your pace you have to you have to set that pace you have to know whether those shorter bursts create greater clarity greater focus greater energy for you and then and take that little sort of the, the slightly slightly shorter gap one of the things i talked about in a youtube video a long time ago was that you know you've got to know the difference between active rest and quitting and what a lot of people do is they go hell for leather without managing their energy for too long periods of time, they get absolutely wiped out and then they have to quit. They, you'll see it on social media, people say, I've got to take a social media detox. I've got to take a step back. It's the new moon, it's the retrograde, it's the full moon, whatever. And they'll step right back from their business for weeks or months. I believe sometimes those things are important. But if you was managing the pace, if you was choosing your timeline, if you didn't try and believe that everything had to happen in the next month two months three months what would happen for you what could what time what pace could you gift yourself so that you could do it with more joy still push yourself enjoy the rest but keep maintain that focus because like i will keep saying to you it is the commitment it is the it is the commitment rather than the intensity it is the it is the consistent effort the consistent action that gets you results so if you find yourself pushing hard then having to take you know a week two three four weeks off where you're doing nothing are you actually really just holding yourself back from the success that you want? Nice short one for you today, but consider those things. And I want you to, as always, there is always something I want you to do as we come to the end of the podcast. And I want you to think about out of those three learnings, which one is a limiting belief for you, right? So are you telling yourself like in number one, I'm not born to do this. I don't have, you know, I didn't go to, to university or I don't have people around me that are entrepreneurs or, you know, I'm just a housewife. If you're telling yourself you're not born for it, remember the acorn, remember everything in nature that grows comes from this tiny little seed and it, all it needs is the right environment. Or maybe you're telling yourself that you don't need to measure anything. You're gonna just like fly by the seat of your pants and see how you feel. BS, right? You've got to start measuring something so that you're not basing your progress on how you feel. And the third thing is you have to set the pace. You have to know what the sprint looks like for you, what the recovery time looks like for you, and also in, in a micro level, what that looks like on a day-by-day -day basis to manage your energy. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the, Life, of the Your Rich Life podcast. If you did like it, please remember, give me a subscribe on iTunes. Please do leave me a five-star review if you'd like, and I'll see you again in the next episode.